Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today we have with us Dr. Charmaine Espinosa, a swine nutrition postdoc at the University of Illinois. So Charmaine, you've been on the podcast before, but for those who didn't listen to the last episode that you were on, before we start, would you mind giving the audience a short introduction about yourself? Yes. Uh, hi, Peyton. Thanks again for uh, this uh, opportunity. And uh, just a short background about myself. I'm Charmaine Espinosa. I'm from uh, the Philippines. So I did my bachelor's and my master's degree in animal science in the Philippines. And uh, 2016, I moved here in the United States to uh, pursue a PhD here in the University of Illinois. And uh, after that, on 2019, I um, doing my postdoctoral studies and here at the same university, at University of Illinois with Dr. Hanstein. Awesome. So I saw a few of the studies that you've been working on while you're there on your postdoc. Um, they seem to highlight the increased digestibility of certain nutrients with the addition of phytase. Would you mind telling us a little bit about those studies? Yeah, sure. So uh, we know that uh, microbial phytase, including that uh, feed additive into our pig diets, is already a common standard practice to increase phosphorus digestibility and its availability from our plant feed ingredients. And that is because phytase is pretty successful in hydrolyzing those ester bonds, and therefore we liberate that uh, phosphorus from our phytate molecule. Now, the underlying question that we have in our mind is that can phytase go beyond that and influence the digestibility of energy and of other nutrients? And so to answer this question, we conducted an experiment. And in this experiment, we prepared six experimental diets. And the first diet that we prepared was a negative control diet. And so this negative control diet was formulated to be deficient in total calcium and digestible phosphorus. And we also reduced the concentration of standardized ill digestible amino acids into this diet. Which, is what, which was approximately 0.02% in comparison with the NRC recommendation. So after that, uh, we prepared five additional diets, and these diets were prepared similarly as the negative control diet, with the exception that these diets were, were supplemented with 250, 500, uh, 1,000, 2,000, and 4,000 units of phytase per kilogram. And so we have these six diets and we fed this to our cannulated pigs. And these cannulated pigs were around 15 to 18 kilograms. And we collected some samples, ileal digesta and fecal samples for us to be able to calculate for uh, nutrient digestibility. And what we have observed as expected, uh, we have observed a quadratic increase in the apparent ileal digestibility of minerals particularly calcium and phosphorus, obviously, and of course, uh, with other minerals as well, uh, potassium, magnesium, and copper. And so uh, this indicates that this phytase is pretty successful in hydrolyzing those ester bonds, and therefore we reduce the ability of phytate to chelate uh, minerals or metal cut ions. What's also interesting is that we have observed a linear increase in the apparent ill digestibility of starch upon increasing levels of phytase in our diets. The same as starch digestibility, we have also observed a quadratic increase in the apparent ill digestibility of amino acids and uh, an average of a six percentage unit increase or improvement was observed when we include 1,000 units of phytase per kilogram in our negative control diet. So it looks like, like you mentioned, that 1,000 unit was the kind of the, the best um, option for this stage of production. Um, do you think there is any benefits from doing like a superdose either earlier on um, in the nursery period or later on in the finishing period? Well, I think that that's a potential uh, opportunity for us to to work on it because here in this study is just a three period study, and you'll see that in the apparent ill digestibility of starch, we'll, we we're still seeing a linear increase and not a quadratic increase, and therefore we 
uh, the phytase still has the capability to degrade more of those uh, isomers and release that inositol. And therefore, that could potentially impact uh, your health and performance, especially in younger pigs. Gotcha. And then um, one follow-up question about this nursery study in particular. Um, so based on this, um, it sounds like it would, you said roughly a 6% increase in total um, crude protein would be recommended for these late nursery pigs to feed if you're feeding this phytase, correct? Yes, since we have observed a quadratic increase in the apparent digestibility of amino acids, and you'll see in the graph um, in our publication that it kind of plateaus uh, and reaches the optimum uh, level of uh, digestibility when you reach 1,000 phytase units. And therefore, uh, in terms of uh, improving your digestibility of amino acids, it is uh, recommended that uh, we include 1,000 units of phytase. Gotcha. And so what would then be the next steps on your for your team for this um, sp specific line of study? Would you look at any different stages of production or anything like that? Yes, good question. Actually, um, with this experiment, uh, we wanted to explore more options because we think that there's a lot of potential factors that could contribute in uh, improving the efficiency of phytase on the digestibility of nutrients, performance, and even health of our um, animals. So uh, we know for a fact that uh, these factors could be uh, the concentration of phytate, concentration of phytase, even the composition of the diets. And now we're also looking into different stages of uh, the pig. And so what we're doing now in our laboratory is uh, what would be the impact of superdosing phytase uh, going beyond 1,000 units of phytase and see what would be the effect of it on the digestibility of nutrients in cells and even look into reproductive performance and how also could it impact the leader performance of, uh, of these uh, pinks. Gotcha. Well, I think that's all we have time for. And I thank you for coming on the show to sharing the results of those studies. Um, and we'll probably make sure to follow up with you when you get those sow studies in as well. Um, so yeah, thanks for coming on and sharing with that. Thank you, Clayton. Yep. And to everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week. Hey, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And we are constantly on the lookout for the latest updates in swine nutrition. And if you have a swine nutrition related research trial that you would be able to share on our podcast, please send an email to nutritionblackbelt at swineit.com. And we would love to talk about your research. See you later.